In this Rhino video tutorial, I'll be showing you how to model a scroll like that that you might see on a door molding or a piece of jewelry. We're going to start with a circle. And it doesn't matter how large this circle is, this is more of a geometry exercise. So I'm going to make this circle at zero. I'm going to hold down shift and left click. And holding down shift turned on my orthographic snap so that the end and beginning of the circle curve are right along our x-axis. Now I've got my O snaps on. You can see they're not disabled. And we have end, mid, and quad. All three of those are going to be useful for drawing the curves for the rest of this scroll. I'll zoom out a little bit here and draw our first curve using that snap. And the second point is going to be in line with that first one along the y-axis in the top viewport and I'm using smart track to get that white line. And then I'll make two more left clicks. I'll select that curve and use F10 to turn on the control points. The last two points, these two points, can be edited at will for the shape of the scroll that you'd like to describe here. But the first two points, I'm going to leave those alone. I don't want to adjust those at all because I want this to have a tangent relationship with the circle right across that point. And I'll use F11 to turn off my control points once I'm done. And I'm going to copy this curve from its endpoint to the center of the circle. So I'll run the copy command. And I have my center object snap on as well. Now to get that center object snap I have to mouse over the edge of the circle, not in the very center of the circle. And then I'll turn on the control points for that new curve, and the same rule applies. I'm going to just edit these last two points and leave those first two points alone. And I'll turn off the control points with F11. The next step for the scroll is going to be to draw a cross section that will sweep along these two curves that we drew as rails. And I'm going to be using the perspective view and the front view, as well as smart track, and I still have the O snaps on. Now I don't need my quad snaps anymore, and I don't need my mid snaps. I'm just going to leave my end snap on. I think that should be sufficient. And I'll start by drawing a curve in the perspective view. Actually, I think I'll turn off my center object snap as well, so that doesn't get in the way. And I'm going to start by drawing at that endpoint, and I left click for the first point of the curve, and then I'm immediately going to go into the front viewport, and you see that white line because the endpoint was highlighted. So Smart Track gives me that white line for the second point, and then I'll go back into the perspective view, just mouse over the endpoint of that second rail so that it highlights, and then go back into the front view and left click along that Smart Track guide, and then back to the perspective for one last point left click and then right click to end that curve. And If I turn on the control points for it you can see that the first point and second point are in a straight line along the z-axis and the third point and fourth point are in a straight line along the z-axis. And This is the cross section for the sweep. I'll turn off the control points and run the command sweep2 and follow the props in the command line. So that's the first rail, that's the second rail. And you want to click towards the same end of each of them to inform Rhino uh, as to the direction that you want the sweep to go. And then select the cross section and press enter. Now in the sweep to rail options, you have this maintain height checkbox. If you click on preview, you'll update the result. And you can see that if maintain height is on, it keeps the height of the original cross section. So that's just a design decision for you when making the scroll. I'm going to leave mine without the maintain height option and I'll say OK. So that's the first surface for our scroll. The second surface for our scroll will be an additional sweep, but this time it'll be a sweep one rail using the circle curve as the rail. So we need one more cross section to draw here. And I'll draw another curve using endpoint snap there. And then I'll go into my front viewport and use that same technique with smart track to get a second point on the curve. And then for my third point, I'm going to hold down the shift key so that it stays in line 
with that last point. And then left click and right click to enter. And if I select that curve, this is what it should look like, and turn on the control point structure, you can see that middle point is in a straight line with both the first and last points horizontally and vertically. And I'll turn off the control points for it and run the sweep one command. Select the circle as the rail and then for my cross sections I'll grab that surfaced edge and the curve that we just drew. And you get the sweep one rail options and I'm going to accept the defaults. And I'm not really concerned about this section here because we're going to be trimming that off, so don't worry about how that looks. Now the next step is going to be to select that curve and do a revolve. Now the revolve command wants an axis, and you can think of this as the center of a merry-go-round. And so we get one left click there to establish the beginning of the revolve axis. And it doesn't matter how long the revolve axis is, we just want to be a straight line with it in that front viewport. And at this point in the command line, we can type in an angle for the revolution, or we can just simply click on full circle up in the command line. So now we have the second surface for our scroll. Now I'm going to run the command SELCRV, so cell curve, just to select all the curves in the scene, and then I'm going to hide them with the hide command, just so that now we have surfaces, and I'll select both of the sweep surfaces and join them together into one poly surface, and the revolve surface is just a single surface. At this point, we're ready to trim these two surfaces, the surface and the poly surface rather, against one another. And so I'll select both of them and immediately go into the trim command. Now if I flip over the model so that we can look at the underside, and I'm in ghosted mode right now. If you right click over the viewport title, you can choose a different display mode. And that allows me to see through the model. So both of these objects, the poly surface and surface, are the cutting tool for a trim command, so I pre-selected them. Now the command line wants me to select the objects to trim, so I'll aim for the edges or the isocurves of either of the surfaces. And you can see that it's not trimming anything, even though I seem to be right over the area that I want to remove on the underside. And the reason for that, and I'm doing this on purpose here, is that there is a surface tangency, there's a coincidence, between the poly surface and this surface right at this location and Rhino doesn't know exactly what to do in that case so this is I'll hit the escape key to exit out of this command this is a case that I will show you how to fix manually so I'll select the poly surface and the revolve surface and run the intersect command and take a look at the curves that are produced and you can see that curve there is representing the point at which it doesn't know which direction to go any longer because off this direction and off to this direction are both valid answers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that one curve and run the command extend curve on SRF. So I want to extend that curve on a surface and the command line wants to know what surface to extend upon so I'll select that end of the poly surface, the sweep one that we made and you can see that the curve goes all the way to the end now and so with it still selected I'll go into the trim command so it's pre-selected as the cutting object and then I'll flip it over and aim for those iso curves of the parts that I want to remove and then enter when done and you can see that we have now trimmed off the parts that we don't need so I'll select the poly surface and the trimmed revolve and run the join command to join them together. And there's your scroll. I want to run the command show edges just to make sure that we don't have any gaps, especially at the center of that revolve. You want to make sure that you didn't uh, grab an incorrect object snap or did something wrong there uh, when establishing the revolve axis. And we can see that we don't have any naked edges in the center, we just have them around the border. 
And to make it look pretty, I'll run the emap command and take a look at what it would look like. And that's how you can model a scroll using Rhino. Thanks for watching.